be more accepted among their peers is School Diversity, which is run by LGBT youth charity Just Like Us, which have moved their resources online so that teachers and students can access the material during lockdown and support the young LGBT people in their community. Well, I'm joined now by the drag queen, Davina De Campo, runner-up on the BBC's RuPaul's Drag Race UK, also a former teacher. And, well, you know the importance of LGBT education because of your own experience. First of all, welcome to the programme. Thank you very much for joining us, Alvin. Just talk to me Thank about, you so much. Just talk to me about your school years and, and, and what happened there and how that has influenced how you're dealing with this. Um, so when I was at school, Section 28 was still in place, which meant that um, teachers were loath to talk about anything to do with LGBT um, issues or student. That's a shame. We will... Oh, I've got you back. We missed most of that. So, to be, forgive me. Can we just uh, pretend that didn't happen? Let's start again. So just explain your experience and how that's coloured thing. Um, so... My experience in school was Section 28 was still in place while I was at school, which meant that teachers were really loath to talk about anything to do with LGBTQ plus issues at all. Um, and because of that, it, it breeds ignorance, which then in, it, in its turn breeds uh, homophobia and bullying. Um, so that was my experience as an LGBTQ plus person uh, going through the school system without having any support from the, the school system itself. Now you knew who you were, you presumably had a broader support network and that is the problem with, with those in lockdown is that they don't have access to that while they're living, many of them, with people who would rather probably not talk about it. Yeah, absolutely. For the, the research that Just Like Us have been doing has found that um, four out of five LGBT plus people um, feel like it's going to be much more difficult um, lockdown and that's because most LGBTQ plus people don't feel comfortable talking about things with their families you know so whereas a straight person would confide in their mom or dad or sister or brother or you know whoever it is at home for an LGBT, uh, LGBTQ plus person and um, it's usually their friends that they'll talk to and of course at this point in time, they're not able to do that. And if you're not comfortable talking about things at home, then of course, trying to call somebody and speak about it, it's unlikely that you'll do that as well, just in case you're overheard. Um, so there's lots of sort of unforeseen ramifications of the lockdown uh, that are kind of being brought to light by this. And, and terrifyingly, underlining what you're saying, young people who identify as LGBT four times more likely to attempt to commit suicide than straight young people, and that jumps to eight times if they're trans. Yes, but... I'm, I'm going to stick with this, because uh, I think we will get the line. Sorry. Yeah, we'll get the line. Sorry, to be that, but oh, I didn't hear a word of the answer, so let's start, uh, just, start again. <laughs> uh, it, the positive thing is that in schools that are delivering inclusive, inclusivity, um, that drops down to much the same level as everybody else. So it really is a case of education. If you can educate people about this, then it stops the uh, ignorance and it stops the bullying. And that gives other people, you know, LGBTQ plus people, a much better chance at life. And particularly as the, uh, people are now going online, obviously at this, this time of crisis, and School Diversity Week is using that, and then presumably that's a huge help. Yes, absolutely. And there's all kinds of things online. So if you're a student and you're wanting to access um, any of the master classes that are online from uh, various LGBTQ plus people in all kinds of different settings, then you can find that on Facebook. That's the um, Just Like Us UK Facebook page. And if you're a teacher wanting um, to have some more information about how you can deliver inclusivity projects, then you can get that at justlikeus.org. You know what you're talking about, because you were a teacher yourself. Yeah, I, I spent a long time working in the education, and from experience I can tell you that it's um, the delivery is still very patchy in the UK. Some schools are doing really excellent work, but they, for other schools there's still a long way to go. You look fabulous, and I'm... I'm <laughs> when, when, when the cameras are off you, how, how do you chill? How do you relax? Um, I like listening.
listening to music and music is a massive part of, of my life so i like listening to music and reading books i'm a real bookworm yeah, if, if there was time, I, I know I know what a voice you've got. We, we 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 could spend all afternoon, but I haven't got the time. But you know, it's really good to talk to you, and uh, thank, thank you very you much, and good luck with the campaign. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Bye bye. Thanks. For their education, but it can be hard in other ways for those who are LGBTQ plus. That's lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, questioning, and others. That's because schools can be one of the few places where they can receive support while their family home may be an uncomfortable place to live. And the statistics are shocking enough already. Lesbian, gay and bisexual youth are four times more likely to attempt suicide than straight people. And for those who are transgender, well, it's eight times higher. And let's talk a bit more about this. I'm joined now by Davina DeCampo, runner-up in TV series RuPaul's Drag Race UK. And with her is Dominic Arnold, chief executive of the charity Just Like Us. Good to have you both. Uh, Davina, if I could start with you. Just what was life like for you at school as a pupil? Um, well, Section 28 was still very much in place while I was at school, and that meant that it was very difficult for teachers to feel that they could talk about anything to do with LGBTQ people. Um, and because, because of that environment, it meant that there was a lot of misunderstanding and a lot of ignorance around the subject, which then leads to bullying. So um, it was rough. <laughs> Oh, I can't, I can't even imagine. In fact, explain how rough was it? How, how did that impact your life as, as, a, as a child at school? Um, so, for me personally, there was lots of uh, name calling in the corridors, pushing, shoving, um, things like that. Things that were targeted specifically at me because of my sexuality. Um, and that, the problem with that is, as a, as a young person, those are your formative years, mm. and so you carry those things with you, you know, mm. being told all the time that you're less than everybody else. Uh, so you pack that stuff through into later life, and it, it does still affect it. I mean, there are still issues to this day. We'll talk about that in a moment, Dominic, but there have been some developments, have been some change where actually school can be a place where people who feel they want to talk about their sexuality, talk about who they are, uh, where they can talk and in the lockdown, that's proven to be something children are, are missing. Yes, I think that's true. Um, I mean, I've worked in education a long time and we've been talking about the fact that schools are difficult places for LGBT people, uh, but it's undoubtedly true that for some, home can be even worse. And if you're at home with people who don't understand or accept your identity, uh, and you might be worried to even speak on the phone through fear of being overheard, then home can be a very difficult place indeed. Mm. So what kind of support is out there? What, what are you calling for in terms of how to reach those children to make sure that they can talk to somebody? Well, I think there's, there's a few options on the table, really. I mean, we identified in our research sort of two main aims that we'd like to fulfil. So one of them is the social need of LGBT young people to still feel like they're part of the community when maybe they can't access those people that have made them feel included. Um, and the second is the curricular need. So many schools that are doing LGBT inclusive work during this period uh, will choose this time, so because of pride, because of school diversity week, to do something positive. And we wanted to replace that. Um, and for that reason, we're starting school diversity week completely online this year uh, with a series of masterclasses from experts in their field that will be delivering content to an audience at home of LGBT people and non-LGBT people really to let them know that being LGBT is something to be celebrated. Mm. And Davina, um, in your former life as a teacher, what, what, were the, what were the struggles that you found there, being able to openly talk about um, some of the issues? Yeah, I think that is also quite difficult as a teacher to um, navigate. Mm. You know, how you talk about these things. Um, I was very fortunate that the school I was working was incredibly supportive and was very, uh, very up on moving things forward. Um, that hasn't always been the case in every every establishment that I've worked, uh, and some places have actively discouraged you from talking about anything to do with sexuality whatsoever. Now, I have to say, the statistics I read out before um, coming to both of you 
I've read them before and I tell you what, every time I read it, it is heartbreaking, it is tragic, it is saddening. Uh, Davina, what needs to be done to make sure that young people um, from the LGBTQ community get the help and support that they need uh, to, to help them with any mental issues they might be facing? Well, it's about patching it before it becomes a problem. You know, the, the stats are really clear. If, if the children get the support that they need, they don't de develop those mental health problems any, any different to anybody else. Uh, so it's about education and creating an environment where everybody can be supported. Um, and that's you know the joy of organisations like Just Like Us, which are, are putting these things in place so that that can happen. Dominic, what are your thoughts on, on what needs to change? I mean, I think at the moment there's an assumption that, that because so much has changed in the LGBT community over the last 30 years, you know, um, there's been marriage, there's been adoption, uh, there's been being able to serve in the armed forces, and I think there's an assumption that everything has just got better and better and better. Whereas if you look at those changes, actually all of them apply to adults and not young people. And there are schools in the UK who are very early in their journey, perhaps haven't started yet, um, for whom being LGBT now is exactly the same as being LGBT 30 years ago. So what I'd say to all of your viewers, uh, all of your viewers with children, all of your viewers uh, who are work in education, have some sort of contact, ask schools what they're doing to support LGBT young people. Uh, and if they're not sure where to start, we're very happy to help. Okay, uh, Dominic Arnell and Davina De Camper, really good um, talking to you both. Hopefully you've touched somebody and offered some help to anybody out there who might be needing some support of some kind. Thank you both. Thank you. Many people still at home, there are online lessons on prominent LGBT people in history and videos on everything from English to art. To promote the week, the organisers have enlisted the help of Davina De Campo, star of RuPaul's Drag Race UK. Davina joins us now. In the uh, context of the Black Lives Matter protests we've seen in tolerance of others evident in this country, does this initiative feel more important than ever to you? Absolutely. Um, in, in many ways, it ties in with the Black Lives Matter movement in that most uh, most bullying and problems in school comes from misunderstanding. So it's just from sheer ignorance. If you're not taught about things, then you you just don't know about it. So a big part of this is about exposing people to the fact that there are other people who live in our society. What's your personal advice for any child facing homophobic or transphobic bullying at the moment? Um, speak to somebody you can trust whether that's a teacher a parent your friend um, and also if it's online the block button is very helpful i use that quite a lot <laughs> um, and there are other places where you can go and get support um, and organizations just like just like us uh, will be able to help with that so depressing that we live in a world where you still have to use the block button. Are you concerned in comparison to last year that many people won't see the material that's been produced? Will schools be encouraging children to view it given the fact that it's just so hard getting any kind of lessons over at the moment, whether for the pupils in school or, or those who are working from home effectively? Well, the school, it's sort of school driven is this um, initiative. So the schools that signed up represent 1.78 million students already. Um, and the, the classes themselves are all online on Facebook. So you can just go to the Just Like Us UK Facebook page and you'll be able to access any of the material that's on there, which is master classes from uh, you know, people who work in museums or universities or uh, with UK Black Pride as well. Um, there's Lady Phil from there. So there's loads of stuff on there. And then if you're a teacher and you're trying to uh, use more inclusive uh, material, then you can also go to www.justlikeus.org and you'll be able to download a learning pack from there for free. Davina De Campo, thank you very much uh, for explaining all of that to us. Uh, have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Finally, this lunchtime, have you or your children done a diary 